so what we uh, this some I, I am telling that these are one of the most difficult part of statistical mechanics which are usually not taught in courses and uh, probably some of you who are here know the difficulty some are not there so I will slightly repeat about that. So basic thing to remember which makes life really much much simple in equilibrium statistical mechanics. Now equilibrium statistical mechanics is the discipline I explained at large uh, yesterday that we, we, we at length yesterday that this is the one we use to describe phase transition and all these things. So the say pressure of a system or energy enthalpy what do we do in terms of the radial distribution function the, the thermodynamic properties and that a very important quantity is two particle correlation function that will do probably uh, somewhere from 10th lecture from now will come the radial distribution function which is the quantity which is observed experimentally in a many different ways. So at one side of this equilibrium statistical mechanics is this thermodynamic properties like entropy. Other side the uh, uh, it, uh, is the information about microscopic arrangement how molecules are arranged around each other and as you can uh, understand this microscopic arrangement plays a very important role in chemical reaction. If two reactants A and B are going to react in a solvent which is the common scenario that we do. Uh, then that is done through um, these, uh, these uh, no, through the certain equation of motion, but the in, uh, intermolecular arrangement plays a very important role. All this information comes out of equilibrium statistical mechanics and equilibrium statistical mechanics is a very major discipline not taught here, but in uh, when I was did doing PhD abroad then we had three courses in chemistry department on equilibrium stat mac and going over to time dependent in the last semester, last uh, A. 201, 202, 203 from 20 uh, the graduate level course used to start. So physics also had three courses. So this was the kind of importance given to that and everybody was made to take 201. So then quantum used to start uh, at that level somewhere like 2006, 6 or 7 quantum used to start. However, in between there is a difficulty, but now again uh, StatMac is becoming very popular because we are having all these, uh, uh, all these, all these com uh, computer packages and we can calculate many things. Another thing that is of much interest these days is the uh, nanomaterial synthesis uh, and the nucleation phenomena and the phase transformation which is connected to phase transition. That is also comes under the essentially view of um, or at the borderline between equilibrium and non-equilibrium statistical mechanics. So this is the preamble I will probably give in every class that why we need to study and what is the basic perception but every day it will be different uh, and different things I will bring in to motivate you and keep you focused into this uh, subject which is I said a formidable theoretical uh, um, discipline. We do lot of on quantum mechanics in chemistry particularly uh, but the advantage of quantum is that by the time you do quantum 1 or by the time you do suddenly quantum 2 you are into Ruthans equation and all the uh, perturbation theories are done and you go to numerics. So it is fairly easy from there and there are all the packages which are uh, amazing packages. So huge number of people doing quantum and it is easy to publish papers because of the interface with uh, organic chemistry or materials and they deal with molecules and chemists love molecules. Uh, in statistical mechanics we also deal with molecules but rather with molecules is taken in term of intermolecular interaction and also molecular shape and size. So uh, the, there is always good to keep these two uh, in mind. Now coming back so what we did yesterday was that I said the most important uh, relation in the entire statistical mechanics is this relation and as I said that this was derived in as a function which gives a measure of the state of the system by Boltzmann. Uh, however, this in, uh, it was brought in equilibrium statistical mechanics used in its present form by uh, Willard Gibbs, J. W. Gibbs and there is really no derivation of this uh, expression as such. So this is to be taken as a definition. 
that is a very important point to remember this important thing from which whole of equilibrium statistical mechanics follows entire in its entirety is because of this Boltzmann formula. So, that is why in his in his grave and also in his bust in University of Vienna where he was they have just written this uh, formula in his also uh, graveyard just this thing is written you can do a google you can see them I saw the bust in Vienna. And uh, of course, they are you know that is the University of Vienna those days because of Austro Christian Empire, no? Aust uh, Austro Hungarian good, Austro Hungarian Empire, the Vienna was the capital, right. So, it was a uh, great, great people were always the, all the including Mozart and many, many people were in, in Vienna. It is much less crowded now, actual population of Vienna is now less than what it was uh, I think uh, 50 years ago or 100 years ago, ok. So, how do we go from here and start? So, I would prefer to consider this that we have two postulates connected by an ergodic hypothesis that we start the statistical mechanics, but two postulates connected by hypothesis is great to say that we really have ensembles and everything come in uh, which is so much in the first microcanonical ensemble. But this also should be regarded actually more of a postulate except that one can show unlike the two postulates where uh, you do not uh, you cannot prove them a priori, uh, you prove them you know uh, posteriorly that means similarly thing here also no a priori motivation or uh, probably there is motivation there is no, no a priori proof or uh, a of that. What is subsequently shown is that this function is, is the same function that we call entropy in thermodynamics. And entropy in thermodynamics you remember is given by the Clausius uh, and it is dq reversible by t, right. So, uh, that is the way if the connection between thermodynamics and statistical mechanics is very important comes. So, I will go and then I think one of you had a question. So, please ask the question. So, now the basic idea then was that we start with uh, to consider a small variation in microcanonical ensemble. This is the a system is characterized by uh, total number of particles, volume V and energy which are fixed. But I can always consider that I can change the number by little or volume by little or I can change the number uh, energy by little. So, that is, so the then as a result of these variations that I do, there is nothing wrong in this and nothing, uh, uh, nothing obscure about this, ok. So, I get the variation of entropy as ds. However, this already beginning to tell you something very interesting that because you have seen these kind of things ds dv, ds d this because this is uh, uh, we routinely use it as a uh, temperature chain or derivation, but even aside from that you have this the Euler's equation, uh, Euler's relation. You know Euler was a mathematician who started doing uh, his study at the age of 24 and for mathematics 24 is really, really, really quite old and then he did some amount that means for few years, not very long time. But he has done huge amount of work in a relatively short period. I think he died young also. But he is in thermo every field you go to hydrodynamics, there are a lot of contribution from Euler. Hmm? So, essentially to Euler, they were certain uh, combinations and a very interesting combination that temperature is the conjugate of uh, entropy or entropy is the conjugate of temperature, pressure is the conjugate of volume, right. And the chemical potential is conjugate of uh, uh, number. You know it in many different forms. If I call it uh, free energy G, then I will bring it on this side E minus T s. E minus T s is uh, uh, E plus P V. E plus P V is the enthalpy, and then enthalpy minus T s is the free energy. These things go over uh, both in the in the in the G and A. Where homogen uh, gives free energy, but it is, it is the same. However, this one now can be used with certain variation because we know it dd equal to tds minus pdv. That condition we have in uh, these are the relations that follow from these things. Why you are doing that? 
why you are doing Euler equation and all these things because we want to get a handle on these things and that then gives us the one that I want dsdv from this relation I get dsdv equal to p by t and uh, you have to understand just like in the um, uh, Newton's equation or Schrodinger equation we write down things okay they are a very strong plausibility argument we write them down you know as you know very well there is no derivation of Schrodinger equation it was written down by transformation. So, here also one writes down things and then see that whether they work or not like this uh, most important equation. Okay, then this is of course, we know very well this is our multi component not necessary for multi component, but this is very your familiar equation. So, now you can call that you know it very well that this is then in indeed is the entropy. The advantage of that now if, if I make this identification. The advantage now is the following, I can know from microcanonical ensemble, uh, these are the uh, condition that means temperature is the de uh, derivative of log omega with respect to energy which intuitively makes sense because omega is the total number of microscopic states of a system belong to a system in the microcanonical ensemble characterized by NVE, then if I change a little energy then the, the number of microscopic states that increases by this uh, uh, quantity 1 over t. Okay. Now, uh, similarly you can have definition of pressure in terms of microcanonical ensemble, then you can have chemical potential in terms of d omega v. Now, uh, this has a very very interesting uh, one corollary which I will discuss a little later if I come. So, this is what the thing that I wanted to review of the microcanonical ensemble then you may continue to do canonical ensemble. Now, you have one of you had a question yeah please tell me in microcanonical in MD. Right, very good question. Oh, 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 yeah, excellent question. So, when you do these calculations, these like uh, uh, phase transitions, uh, and this uh, this creates an enormous problem. And I give you problem. Uh, we do NPT. Like I give you an example. Right now, we are doing, and also do we give the Gibbs ensemble that means because number of particles exchanged and that is mu pt that means that is the Gibbs ensemble NPT is isothermal isobaric. So, all these things uh, mm, uh, all these different ensembles are brought in uh, but at certain cost and I tell you the cost. Right now we have been trying very hard to study ice water interface other people have studied you can see several papers are there. So, two things we are trying to do one of them is that the uh, why it is very interesting question we are just writing the paper that if you take like argon which are characterized by energy Jones potential then the FCC lattice and the liquid interface is rather broad it is about 4 to 6 monolayers or molecular layers, but water interface is sharp. So, we try to understand why water interface is sharp and it is a, a huge importance ice water interface in, in many many different contexts and we came to that from there is a class of proteins called antifreeze protein uh, which is lot of theonine uh, with hydrogen bonding uh, hydrogen bonding. So, these antifreeze proteins with a large number of theonine. Uh, they stop ice growth or ice remain static. So, you want not just to growth we also so from there we went okay let us just study the interface first and I knew this problem because it is a very difficult problem because the, when the something an interface is 4 to 6 or 8 mono layers 
then you can cannot study them by any experimental techniques you know like I cannot do neutron scattering on that that needs uh, um, micrometer or millimeter uh, length. Uh, I can do imaging, but the spectroscopic imaging cannot uh, study that length scale. I can do TEM, but TEM means it is static, it is not dynamic. Uh, I wanted to do the fluctuations at the interface. Okay. And then when we try to my student is trying to, uh, two students are trying to stabilize the NPT, it is a hell of a problem because they just either the ice melts back or the ice forms that because there is a barostat, an idiotic barostat is, is, is giving forces into the system and then of course there is a thermostat. So, so the people who are continuously studying in NPT or Gibbs ensemble, they have this difficulty and you are right, there is no way I can do NVE in that system uh, because if I do NVE, then I will not be able to uh, remove the latent heat. Say latent heat has to be removed, you know. Otherwise, I can stabilize and remove everything and say, say it is NVE, then that will stay in that system. Unless I can have such a large system, an humongous system, then NVE will be able to capture because this growth of crystal or melting will be captured as a fluctuations in the system. But that is not possible here. So, but the kind of systems we do, we have um, maybe 5000 water molecules and uh, people are doing, uh, those who have done successful simulation, they have a very long, uh, a, uh, they have a crystal slab and then liquid on the two sides. Uh, and uh, different people ask different questions. So, you are absolutely right that there is this uh, huge problem and that is why there are two kinds of simulation people. One are the people like us who are application and not respected and there are people who are developers who develop potential, develop methods like uh, these guys in uh, Italy, what is his name, Perinello, those who then uh, Tori and Value who did umbrella sampling. Perinero group did many things, I mean issue plus metadynamics. So, the way to come around these things in phase transition then use this uh, uh, specific sampling, you know that means you which are called method of constraints which are like our Lagrangian multiplier which are method of constraint. You move things around in the direction you want it to go and you equilibrate along that. That is the way you, you do the simulation. So, there is a huge problem. Uh, one probably should at the, the, I have two chapters at the end of my book on computer simulation. I want certainly to do the chapter 31 which is on computer simulations uh, where I have devised new ways of doing uh, periodic images, minimum image convention. I did in terms of Ising model and it is so easy to see what is the method of images, or the, not sorry, uh, the uh, minimum image convention, periodic boundary condition. But that is in the chapter 31 of my book. Uh, it is very simple. I was not happy with the conventions, give, uh, the explanation given in Allen and Tildesley or other books because it seems too complicated. It is so simple a method. But then you take the one dimensional Ising model, the, all these explanations and all these statistical mechanics becomes much simpler. Okay. So, the, does that explain partly your question? It is a difficult question and uh, difficult to answer at the same time because that is not done. Okay, now, uh, so we now, uh, from then on, we went. So, so what will happen? I'm, I'll be spending more time on this because I want you to be uh, comfortable. Uh, th because this is intimately connected with all our simulations and all the interpretation of our results. That how we do statistical mechanics, and once you become familiar with this, is really very, very, very nice things, and you can. You see, when you, for example, you are doing lattice calculations, very recently all the surfactant work, all the lipid bilayer work were done by saying how many ways I can pack things and uh, then how many ways you pack things from there you get omega and then you go on from there. So, this is the partition function. 
so in microcanonical uh, ensemble omega is the partition function uh, or sometimes it is also called uh, so in microcanonical ensemble this is the partition function and this is the uh, thermodynamic potential thermodynamic potential is the quantity that takes an extremum value actually if you think of that you always maximize the thermodynamic potential uh, so free energy we write as kvt but the way it should write at a minus kvt uh, so uh, that is the one that follows from boltzmann's uh, uh, arrow of time which was um, uh, stephen hawkins and all these people wrote so much book on that that the arrow of uh, time is because the entropy it, a system left by itself goes to a state which has maximum entropy that is the uh, Boltzmann's principle and ok. So then from but uh, my, as we know micro canonical answer please ask questions micro canonical ensemble is not very useful. So there are uh, several issues one issue is system at equilibrium but away from phase transition the properties of water. Uh, properties of isotonitrile or um, dimethyl sulfoxide or properties of uh, a block of iron or uh, all whatever or uh, so solid. Uh, there is one thing like that. Another thing is phase transition and the many other aspects that we study. So when the system is at equilibrium in a stable state away from phase transition, then if we have to describe that, then NVE is not the greatest greatest of the system because there are too much constraint real world NVE is not there. So we have to go to with now, now we start relaxing we go to NV, NVT then we go to NPT one by one we will do that. 